this is Hussein Askari reporting from Stockholm, uh, Sweden. It's uh, Sunday, June the 5th, uh, from the central square of, uh, in Stockholm, Sergei Story. Uh, today we have uh, the first gathering of uh, a group of young people, independent young people, who are here to vote to protest against the policies of the international uh, and European financial system, but also against the policies which are being imposed on nations such as Greece, Spain, Portugal, Ireland and other nations where young people are seeing that their future is being bargained, uh, mortgaged for to saving the international financial system which is not in the service of human beings anymore. So this is the, f the first meeting of such a group of uh, an organization called uh, uh, European Revolution in all uh, cities. And these are groups of young people who have, are not really part of any political grouping or party, but they are seeing that unless they organize themselves and start kicking the politicians, uh, so nothing will happen and the system will just die and take everyone with it. So we're going to talk with some of the initiators of this uh, movement here in Stockholm and see why they have started this here and what are their objectives. Why did you start this group uh, here in Sweden? It's very simple. Um, if you just look at the, not just the current crisis, be it financial or social or there are so many problems in this world and it just comes timely right now. In the current situation where people have starting to rise and wake up and realize that they are pretty much getting, you know, their resources are getting stolen but a few, few groups of companies and people and there's such injustice and especially here in the Western world a lot of people have been able to close their eyes on these facts but as soon as they start rising up in the vicinity of your own cities then you start to realize that hey maybe everything isn't so good and you start looking at possible truths that are out there because you realize that wait if the everyday magazine I'm reading doesn't even write an article about that there's a hundred thousand people in the streets of Athens, then something must be very wrong. Then also that UN releases reports saying that 1% of the world's population earn, or owns more than 40% of the resources. And you're saying that we have, uh, and, and the typical mainstream magazine says that, oh, the economics are going really good, that the, um, the stock market is growing currently. Wow, it's, let's, it's time to celebrate. And it's so many contradictions that are pointing to totally different directions, so you, you just feel that it's your responsibility to find out what is the real truth about it. No, there, are, there are the governments today in Europe and the, in the United States, they say we have to save this financial and banking system yeah. for any, at any price, because if this system goes, everything collapses. And they are pouring money, printing money, giving to the banks. But yeah. at the same time, you have mass unemployment among young people, you have a degenerating infrastructure, we have a food crisis, at the same time they say, well, we don't have money for that. But yeah. these, is this one of your these are problems you have with the system now? The thing is that if you look at the facts, there's a derivative problem. That is <laughs> over a quadrillion dollars. And the total amount of money the money supply total amount is maybe, I don't know, somewhere between five, six, seven trillion in the total amount of the world's money supply. Mm -hmm. So how come that there's <laughs> like 300 times more death coming from derivatives than there is real money in existence? It's pure nonsense. And so when this bubble starts collapsing, which is doing right now, why the banks need bailouts, they say, okay, so you need to pay us 1.4 quadrillion dollars in order to not make the whole system crash. So you ask yourself, wait, wait a minute. So all the excess money coming beyond these first five, six trillion dollars, fake money, it's nothing. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a Ponzi scheme, that's what it is. And so what, what, do you, what do you suggest to do with this money? 
with that so-called finance, these financial derivatives and other yeah. instruments? Yeah, so we, we want to find a way, first of all, a very clear demand. It's a very clear step to begin with. It's to separate real money, the, the real money supply from what is just fake. You mean financial yes. paper and so on? Exactly. Because it, it doesn't deliver any kind of value whatsoever. It's just making money with money. It's people who are sitting somewhere and living this dream of a life that no one in a world where they work with concrete things that bring real physical benefits to people don't get the same opportunities. Mm -hmm. So what, what is the responsibility of governments in this case, or, or parliaments, or uh, the US Congress? Uh, because there are proposals to, like there is an idea to introduce the, reintroduce the Glass-Steagall Bank, uh, uh, Act, Banking Act to separate financial uh, speculation from real economic, uh, physical economic uh, credit giving. Uh, and what, what is the responsibility of governments now? Because they think that it's the market which should resolve everything. Mm. No, we don't think so. We think because the state... First of all, I want to make it really clear that this is not about that we're communists or capitalists. We don't care. We want to try solutions that work. We want to find these solutions and we want to implement them. Therefore, this is the reason why we have decided to gather on the square today and we will continue doing that frequently. So, what we want concretely is that since the state represents the people, the state must work for the benefit of the people. That means the state takes responsibility and takes the actions deemed necessary to make the life of every person at least decent ones. And not that some are living paradise, some are living hell. So, simply, we believe in that. A lot of people, we, we heard these concerns voiced, especially here in Sweden where we're from. A lot of people saying, oh, well, there's a problem that politicians, they don't really represent the people. You know why they don't represent the people? Because people don't go out on the streets and show what they really want. If a politician wakes up in the morning, it's a, it's a normal person. I mean, they have the same kind of wants and needs as uh, all we others do as well. The thing is just that they live also in a certain kind of bubble. You have to take into context where they work. They wake up, they read certain magazines. There are, again, written articles written by private interest. So that is their primary source. Then they go to their working place, which is the um, the Riksdag here in Sweden, so the uh, Congress that would be in the uh, United States. And then they have the discussions they have from day in to day out about the same matters coming from the same points of perspective. So if you don't have any kind of public voicing of opinion that can be really well heard, then there is no public opinion. If you crave democratic rights and you don't exercise your rights to express your opinion to the state that's supposed to represent you, then you don't have any rights, even though you think you live in a democracy. So you have to be an active citizen rather than just a consumer. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. I think this is going to be the start shot for a real citizens movement here in Sweden, something which people thought could never happen. Uh, because the people here in Sweden are so uh, satisfied with the current uh, state of affairs. But they, this is also has to do with what is going on in Greece and Spain and Ireland and these countries that are being sacrificed to pay. Uh, is there any coordination you have with these other youth movements? Well, since we have today decided that our first meeting here today will be about gathering the group of active participants, those who show up on the square, show some kind of interest in all of this. Therefore, we need to establish a group of people who are interested to actually work in this, and we're going to discuss this, and we're going to form groups, and then we're going to find similar groups in other cities of Europe and coordinate these things. For example, there's a petition going on um, that is going to be sent out to avaz.org, which we want to have a lot of people signed this uh, petition. 
where we want to make clear demands. And if we can get several million people who sign this petition, then it simply cannot be ignored. And if it's ignored, then we know that Avaz is just another puppet of whatever interest it plays for. So there are going to be very clear demands. We're not just a group of people who are really tired of being, you know, raped by banks and other financial institutes. And the I want IMF to make chief. really clear that we're not afraid of you because we have very little to lose. The more time goes, we have less and less to lose. We want to make sure that you should be, you know, not physically afraid. We're never going to use any kind of violence, you know, in opposition to you. We're going to use our minds. We're going to use com communication and uh, right. simply... And the passion of the youth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great, uh, uh, Henry. Uh, thanks a lot. And then we will see you again uh, here in the coming days, uh, more and more, and there will be uh, larger numbers of young people. So keep up the good work. Definitely. Yeah, take care.